Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So I'm back in the producer seat, I have my headphones on, and I'm doing what I love doing most, which is producing music, especially in Studio One. And yeah, I'm just working on this section here in this beat that I have going on. Let me play it for you. And of course, it's not mixed yet, it's not finished, but it's just a creative stage of the process. So I'm already quite happy with this, of course. I need to do some fight tunings here and there. And I'm currently working on this bass here. And before I show you what I actually want to show you, I just want to point out how much I love the vocoder in Studio 1.6, not just to generate these robot voices, like, you know, from Kraftwerk and these kind of bands, but also to generate overtones as an alternative to saturation. For example, on this sound here, this is without the vocoder and with. just brings in these very lovely overtones that help the sound dominate the mix better. That's just a side note, if you haven't used the vocoder yet to spice up your bass lines and make them more audible in the mix, definitely give it a try. But what I actually want to show you is this auto filter that I have right afterwards, right here. And um, this is one of the presets that I found in Studio One Toolbox, which is a sound set add-on that you can purchase, or if you're a Personosphere member, you have that available as a free download in your product section. And it sounds really, really cool. Right now it doesn't do anything. But if I turn up the mix value, then you're gonna hear it. Right, does some very cool pitch shifter stuff. And if I'm just playing around with my mouse like this, and I'm able to generate a cool effect like that, this is when I like to just add an automation that keeps doing that for me, so that my mouse is free again to do other stuff in the production. The way I like to do this, and I've shown you this in my previous episode, is I go up here to the top left to the control link box and I tick mouse over as an option. Now I can just very quickly add any of these parameters in Studio One as an automation by simply hovering over them with my mouse, like for example here on the mix value, and then I just hit Option and A on a Mac or Alt and A on Windows, that's all I need to do, and bam, I already have my brand new automation lane that I can expand right here. Now, of course, I could just go ahead and click these values in like so, but what I find to be a much more creative way to go about automation are these waveform tools that we have available inside of Studio One, which is the topic of today's video. So if you go here to the toolbar, you see the paint tool, and if you click on it, and click on it again, you can actually select a wide variety of different waveforms that you can use as a starting point for your automation. For example, you can use the sine wave or maybe the sawtooth wave here, and then you can just go directly to the automation lane that you've created and start drawing in something. And when you're automating parameters like a mix parameter, this can have some really wild effects. And often I just like to surprise myself with the outcome. So I have no idea what it's gonna sound like. Let's just try it. That's cool. Right? Or maybe I can try the same thing with a sine wave. So instead, I just select a sine wave here, draw that in. That would sound like this. And that would already sound really, really cool, right? It sounds like a lot more work than it actually was. And that's what I like about these creative tools. They just, yeah, make for an unexpected result, but that's not entirely random. You can completely alternate that to your liking and then shape it. So it's not like Studio One just suggests something and you're rolling with it. It's just a starting point to make things a little bit easier for you. What you can also do is you can draw in these waveforms. So once again, you go up here, you just select the waveform you want, you go to your automation lane and you start drawing. Now, before you let go, you can hold down Command on the Mac or Control on Windows to shift the starting point around. Or you can also hit Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows to just change the frequency, right? So if you want this to be a little bit less frequent, you can just hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows and stretch it this way. Now, of course, you can also use the Transform tool. I have my own dedicated video covering the Transform tool because it's just such an awesome tool, really one of my favorite things about the whole software. And you can select that here. And that is just so powerful to invert waveforms to make them 
like increase in intensity or decrease gradually, you can use that to sort of compress your waveform like so to make the modulation peaks and dips a bit more gradual. And um, yeah, then you just let yourself get surprised by the outcomes each and every time. Maybe even faster or maybe slower. <laughs> this is really cool. Right, and this is how easy you can make these sort of dubstep modulations if you're into that stuff. But of course, you can also use that for panning and all kinds of things. Like, you don't have to use it in this way. You could use that for tremolo, for panning. So this is not just limited to the kind of music genre that I'm showing here. The techniques that I'm teaching you are hopefully universal and also apply to whatever music you're making. With that said, there's also a couple of more basic waveforms. We also have access to like the line tool, which is great for these very simple fade-ins and fade-outs, like so. You can also use the parabola tool right here to create logarithmic fades. And once you have something, you can always go to the transform tool, or you can also hit Option and T on a Mac or Alt and T on Windows for even faster access, and then shape that from here to your liking. So that's just something I wanted to show you really quickly. The waveform tool is just so powerful. So if you haven't used the waveform tool yet in your productions, go ahead, give it a try and let me know how it goes in the comments. Thank you for watching.